Imagine vats of molten metal registering a thousand degrees. Get too close, and the skin will melt right off your body. At Sloss Steel Mill, there were hundreds of ways to die, and hundreds did. Birmingham, Alabama. Inaugurated in 1882, the Sloss Furnaces transformed coal and ore into hard steel. It is now a ghost factory. I was very skeptical about ghosts. I always have been. Would I come back at night by myself? No, sir. I do think this place is haunted. It's full of the people who've worked here, died here, and lived here. In the early days at the Sloss Mill, workers labored in deadly conditions. The workers said that the only difference in working around that hot iron in the summer and the winter time was that in the summertime you were burned all over. In the wintertime you were burned on one side and frozen on the other. You were sitting, standing, working right at the gates of hell. Today, Sloss Furnace is a national landmark and historical museum. The biggest employee complaint in terms of being spooked out simply would be that, the, the sense of danger, the sense of being endangered by something inexplicable. Something that's watching, that's something that's waiting, that's, that's lurking in the darkness here. Catwalk. We felt a very strong presence towards the other end of the catwalk. As I turned to look, um, in the pitch blackness, there was a shape, almost like a glowing human-like figure standing there with no recognizable features. And it was a very terrifying experience and a very unusual experience. Leo. The gentleman I saw gave me an odd feeling. I knew he was there. At the same time, I knew he wasn't there. I felt like I was dealing with something not of this world, something unusual. He very well could have died here. He could have died at this wheel. A man was by the wheel well and was snagged by that wheel, which was moving very fast, and swept into the wheel well and crushed. And about every two seconds, he came back around and there was less of him. As I came down the steps and walked along this walkway here, I got about halfway down here, and I began to, to hear what I thought was footsteps or someone else was in the tunnel with me. I got to the end of the tunnel here, and I stopped and turned it around, thinking possibly somebody may have been playing a joke, but there was nobody there. At that point, I hit those stairs, and uh, I haven't been back in this tunnel by myself since. And I wouldn't be down here now if it wasn't for you guys with me, I promise you that. Furnace. The name of the worker who fell into the furnace was Richard Jowers, and that happened in 1887. And he was overcome with gas and fell into the furnace and was incinerated. By the furnace where Jowers died, one eyewitness had a terrifying encounter. All of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I saw something. At first, I thought it was a person. The clothes that he was wearing didn't seem contemporary at all, almost like coveralls. And then when I realized it wasn't, my eyes started to water, my heart started to beat fast. It was just that feeling, that terrified feeling inside that something, someone was around you that wasn't real. It was frightening. 
It is an interesting coincidence that where people feel like that they have felt the presence of spirits or thought that they had seen something in the furnace just happens to be where some of our worst accidents did occur. More and more and more people seem to have sightings and less and less and less people return to work for the following shift. I've been back at Sloss at night several times, but I have never been back inside this blowing engine room by myself and certainly not on these catwalks by myself. I've actually, honestly, have stopped shutting the place down at night by myself. I wait and do it in the morning. I don't like being here anymore. Only one person agreed to return alone to Sloss Furnace at night. I'm ready to take the risk. I'm ready to come back and see what I can find. I'm ready to face my fears. Paravision, a paranormal research team, was brought in to investigate. Uh, around 1995, Paravision went together to uh, develop equipment on a scientific level to study uh, entities. This is the latest piece of equipment here, which is uh, an ear, an amplification device, which uh, hears the slightest sound. This is the Cyclops 3000. This was one of our original designs. It's a headset that sees in total darkness. This is called the Intruder Truck. It's geared with an infrared camera, and uh, it goes in where we really don't want to go. This is the optic nerve uh, lighting system, which actually modulates at a certain frequency. This is good between zero and 12 feet in front of the camera. There was nothing there. You just, you just disappeared. It just disappeared. It just vanished. Certain individuals attract entities no matter what. In these cases, we have to put the person by themselves alone in total darkness. And I hope they can overcome this fear just enough so that we can see how real the phenomenon actually is. Would you be willing to go back to that location and show us the, the area where that phenomenon happened? I'll be honest, I'm nervous about <laughs> You're it. You're nervous about it? Lauren was left alone in total darkness and asked to describe her experiences. It's cold. That was really cold. But it's almost icy, more icy than it, it, it's supposed to be. It kind of feels like there's activity kind of above me. Um, that feeling of someone watching, someone being there. You know, you think you hear things like footsteps. and It's, it's not like I think there's nothing here. I just think you can't tell which is which, what's real and what's supernatural. I get a weird feeling from up there. Um, it kind of like something was watching me. But there was also a lot of noise inside the building. I mean, it was heavy walking and this kind of yeah. like metal. And what you had to have heard came out of the furnace and not from the building. There's actually nothing on this side of the building. Y'all haven't been inside that building? No, we were the next building over. Yeah, like, y'all aren't right there. No. no. Uh -uh. We were two buildings away from you. There, there's no possible way that you could have heard any of it. Were you scared? I was afraid. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was afraid. Just that fear of what could happen, I think it kept me from opening myself up to what could be. And then, oddly enough, the sounds that I heard aren't, you know, I just dismissed them, I guess, just trying to displace my fear. And then, oddly enough, they 
for real in the not so real sense. Paravision is concluded by the eyewitness accounts and the testimony and the scientific data that we have collected that this uh, environment is haunted and is haunted with a large number of, of consciousness and our ghosts. I think it would be quite possible for us to be full of ghosts here because uh, so much of these men's lives were attached to the work at this furnace. Absolutely believe this place is haunted. Wow.